Hi. Um, so in this chapter, we're going to discuss finance. And I know it seems kind of silly to, to do um, finance by hand because we know that um, in, uh, you know a lot of it is technology based and the formulas are pre-calculated inside the technology in which give us the answers. So even some calculators, handheld calculators can do some of these finances. But recall that this class isn't for technology or for algebra or to code in formulas into a calculator. It's really about you and your life and all the finances that you'll have throughout your life from retirement to investing to um, benefits, to savings, to loans. I mean, just so many things on the spectrum of finance that you have to have a good base on, basis of understanding. And also, you get the opportunity to put some of this um, chapter to work in later on in the semester with a project where you go make a, a personal purchase with the with, and getting a loan and you put you either don't put money down or you do and you get to calculate all that stuff by hand and really what it's about is it's really about having a better understanding of how these things are calculated one example is um, retirement. You know, some students are so young when they start college, they don't think about retirement. Yet, if it's going to take you, you know, if it takes you 30 years of working to accumulate certain amount of income, then how much do you have to save to take the remaining 30 years of your life in retirement? So you're working for 30 years and saving so that you have a quality of life for your last 30 years of not working in retirement. So how much do you have to save? Do you want to have the same quality of life, right? Maybe not like you want to downsize. So most people in retirement downsize to a smaller home, um, a smaller car, because they didn't save enough during the 30 years of working. And so they need to adjust their lifestyle for retirement. So it's all very interesting, even um, not just uh, saving money, but loans, like purchasing a car, and how are they giving you that interest and in, um, and pay in the payoff and all that stuff. So we're gonna calculate all this finance. So when you leave this chapter, you will have a really good understanding. And when you walk into that bank or walk into that car lot or walk into a home mortgage, you're gonna understand that one percentage point means a lot to your payment in the long run. Um, you know that saving an extra $5 a month will let, allow you to have thousands of dollars later on in your retirement. So you're going to have just have a better awareness and understanding. So then you make those finance decisions um, with more knowledge, hence making better de financial decisions in your life. So students love this chapter. I mean, they just learn so much and they know that they're going to just take it all with them throughout their life. So we're just going to start with baby steps. So we're going to start the way it all started with with interest, you know. So what happens is um, there are a few terminology vocab, and then once we get in, we'll, we're just going to get into it. So let's go ahead and start off with the most basic type of um, finance formula, which is simple interest. So simple interest, um, no matter what, we always need principal. And principal is just the amount, the original amount that you're working with. So it's either the original amount that you deposited or the original amount that you're borrowing. So um, interest is the amount of money that a financial institution gives you for just having your money there. So um, like I have as a teach, an instructor, I have a summer saver because we don't get paid in the two months in summer. So I have a summer saver and I take out a little bit for my paycheck every month and it goes into my summer saver and accumulates all the income that I would have to need to maintain my quality of life for those two months. But the bank loves it so much that I'm saving that much money every month that they give me 3% back, which is really awesome. And it's like 3 to 4%, which is a really high interest rate, but it's just an incentive for teachers to just put our money in that bank and and they give us interest. So not only am I saving my money, earned money, but then by summer, I have this extra like few hundred dollars I get just from letting my money sit there. 
So interest is just either the amount that we're going to pay back to the bank for giving us and loaning us money or the amount bank pays us to keep money in their institution. The interest rate determines the interest. So the interest rate is a percentage and it's going to determine a lot and really essentially what we want if we borrow money we want this interest rate to be low right so if we borrow we want it to be real low but if we're saving money we want that interest rate to be super high you know because i want to make money okay so here is the formula for simple interest simple one-time interest also means one deposit so make sure you put that in your notes it's very important that you understand. If you save money, you know that you don't make one deposit and let it sit there for 30 years, right? Like if you are a regular saver, then you're putting $25 every paycheck. So you're like continuously every by by monthly putting in money into a savings account, right? This isn't the case. It's like you're going to put one deposit and let it sit there and you get one time interest. So you only get interest once. So um, the interest formula here is interest i call it ipr interest equals the principal times the rate but if you want to know the total amount at the end of the um at the end of the one time interest then the total amount has to be that original principal plus however much you made in interest so this is just going to be equal to the original amount plus the interest um, because it's only one deposit, one interest, it's a really simple calculation. You just calculate the interest and add it to the original amount. Okay, so taking this example, suppose a city is a is building a new children's park and issues bonds to raise money to build it. Sally obtains a 1,000 bond, pays 3.5 interest annually, and matures in six years. Okay, how much interest will Sally earn after one year? So interest will mean that we just want to find how much Sally earns for letting a thousand dollars sit there. So this will be simple interest because it's the one deposit of a thousand and then one year she gets three and a half percent. So we're going to use the IPR formula. So I equals the principal times the rate. Now we know that the principal is $1,000 and then the rate was 3.5%, but we have to rewrite the percentage as a decimal, so 0 0.035. Okay, so the interest will be the principal of $1,000 times the rate, 0 0.035. Now, um, if I were you, I would you put this all in the calculator. Your calculator can do all this work. So you can just do 1,000 parentheses 0 0.035. So this calculator that I'm using allows me to use parentheses and uh, put in exactly how it is on my paper. So $35. So we would say Sally earns $35 uh, in interest. after one year. Now because we're dealing with dollars, um, we would round to the nearest cent when appropriate. Here everything was in dollars so we just leave it. Okay, then if Sally's earning $35, what is the total interest Sally will earn when the bond matures in six years? Well that just means that if she's earning $1,000 and three and a half percent for every uh, every time the bond matures, uh, every year that the bond matures, then we know that she's earning this three and a half um, percent, which is thirty five dollars every year. So if she earns thirty five dollars per year, then the total interest is equal to $35 times however many years, right, the time. Well, in this case, the time was six years, so we would just multiply it by six. So if we did this, we would have 35 times six, which 
which is $210. So bonds are a little different. They don't get to earn interest off interest. They just say one time deposit of a thousand and then you get three and a half percent every year of this amount and that's it. Um, when we start earning interest off interest, which is similar to how we have in today's world, that's going to be the evolving you know, content that we're going to do here. So we're starting off how it really started and then we're going to build to how the current way we do financing today. Okay, so then if Sally earns 35 per year and over six years, $210 in interest, then what? how much is she going to get when she cashes out at the end of six years? Well, the total amount is going to be, remember, the original amount plus interest. Okay, well, the original amount was $1,000, and we add the interest of 210 So after six years, Sally's going to earn a total of $1,210. Um, but you notice over time, it's going to have to multiply by the time. So next, we need to discuss how we're going to take simple interest over time. Now, before it was one deposit, one time interest. Now let's do one deposit over time. Okay, so now we can incorporate IPRT. And I call that I pretty because I'm so pretty. <laughs> and um, essentially all you're gonna do to find the interest is just multiply by the time like we did in the previous example. The only difference now is, let's go ahead and write this out. This is one deposit Okay, and over time. So that's the only difference. So let's go back. So this is interest, simple interest, one time interest, one deposit. This is simple interest, one time, uh, over time, one deposit. Okay, so the only catch here is now we have a, a time unit. So sometimes you have months, sometimes you have years. So I put a note in here that stated that just be careful that when your units of measurements are in different time frames, you have to rewrite them in the same time frame. So the time should match the time for the interest rate. So just make sure everything's in years or everything in months or everything in, it has to just be every uh, match. So it, for example, um, if Uncle Moneybags deposited $300 in an account earning 5% annual simple interest, how much will Uncle Moneybags have in the account in 10 years? So notice here the word annual means yearly and the time they give is also in years. So these match up and so then you're okay. It's only when it doesn't match up that we have to rewrite one or the other in the same time units. Um, so this is going to be, um, if we want to know how much he will have in the account in 10 years, we're not looking for the interest, we're looking for the amount in the end. So we're going to be using this um, formula right here. So we'll use A equals P sub zero, one plus RT. Now, um, I usually do a little appendix here with the parameters just to see which ones I have and which ones I need. I do know that the principal here is equal to $300. That's how much I'm depositing. The rate is 5%, which is 0.05. And the time is going to be 10 years. So notice I write it like that. And then I go over here and I say, OK, A equals principal times 1 plus RT. OK, so the principal was $300. That's how much I originally put in the account. And 1 plus 5%, 0 0.05 times time, which is 10. Okay, once again, we're not in algebra. I'm just gonna go straight over to my calculator and put it in exactly how I see it on my paper. So I have 300 parentheses, one plus 0.05 
parenthesis 10, parenthesis, parenthesis. So notice that I have one parenthesis here and then one to close it out. And I get 450. So using the formulas aren't too bad. It's deciding which formula that we should be using. So the keywords in this section will be the word simple interest. So here a loan company charges $30 interest for one month loan of $500. Find the annual interest rate they are charging. Once again, we have time in here and time units are going to be a factor. I have this as monthly, right? And then annual as yearly. So I need to either put everything in years or everything in, um, in months. So because we're looking for an annual interest rate, really what we need is everything to be an annual in years. So we'll rewrite a 30 day loan in terms of how in years. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we want to do is notice that we're dealing with only interest. So um, we're going to go ahead and use the interest formula from up here, which is I pretty I P R T. So I put it here like this, and then I go ahead and write down what I have. So how much was the original amount of the loan? So I actually took a $500 loan. The rate is going to be, um, we don't know, right? And the time is going to be one month. But one month, is not in years because our rate needs to be an annual interest rate annual meaning years so let's rewrite one month into years so one month is what fraction of a year so one month is one month out of 12 months in a year so it's one twelfth of a year and i wouldn't um put it in the calculator and round because you're going to get rounding errors and you don't want to do that. So just leave it. Our calculator is robust enough to handle the fractions. So now there's your appendix. Let's put it in the formula. So the interest, the annual interest rate now will be the principal RT. So that was $500 times the rate, we don't know, times the time, which is 1 12th of, um, of a year. Okay, so if I just simplified this a little bit, um, I do know that the interest amount was $30. So let me go ahead and write that. So I can simplify the right side to be 500 over 12 R, because 500 times 1 is 500, and then divide by 12. Then I could go ahead and use some of my, you know, arithmetic techniques and multiply each side by the reciprocal. But I wouldn't do anything on the calculator just yet. So then these reduce out and I'm left with R on the right side and 12 five hundredths times 30 as my rate. Now, because the rate is a percentage, we do expect this rate to be 0 to 100% or 0 to 1, right? Because 1 is 100%. But somewhere in there, we don't expect it to be 3, because that would be 300%. We're looking only between 0 and 1. So let's go ahead and put this in our calculator. Now, once again, notice like I don't do anything in the calculator till the end, because my calculator can handle the fractions. So watch, I'm going to do 12 divided by 500 and then times 30 and I get 0.72 okay so the rate is 0.72 but this means that the interest rate is not 70, 0.72, we don't, we say it in percentages. So let's move the decimal back over for 72%. 
Now, that interest rate is really high. I don't think I would ever go anywhere that they told me my interest rate was 72%. We are so used to seeing interest rates right now at like 2%. So can you imagine 72%? So I can only imagine this is something not um, legal, <laughs> like a loan shark or something, because <laughs> 72% is really high for any sort of um, financial institution. So, okay.